I've got a can of diet material here. And we're going to learn about two laws. One, Boyle's law, which says pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. And the second one is called Henry's law, which says pressure is directly proportional or the concentration is directly proportional to the gas above the solution. So let's take a look at Henry's law first. These are bottled under pressure. I think there's about 40 PSI, pounds per square inch, above atmospheric pressure in here. What that does is it makes the carbon dioxide that's in here go into solution. It's more soluble at a higher pressure. That's what Henry's law says. So that when I open up a can of soda, that's if you're from New, uh, New York, Midwest, it's pop. If you're from Atlanta, it's Coke, no matter what it is. The gas comes out because as you open it up, you lower the pressure, the pressure goes down. So the concentration of the dissolved gas goes down, so it bubbles out, all right? Can't drink that, this is a lab. The second one involves something called Boyle's Law that says the pressure is to, uh, uh, inversely proportional to the volume. And perhaps you've seen that. If somebody shakes up a can of pop like this and you open it up, let me do that over the sink, it kind of spews all over you. And that really has something to do with Boyle's Law. What Boyle's Law says, as the pressure goes down, which it does when you open the can, the volume of the gas goes up. But when you shake up a can, you dislodge some of the bubbles that are in solution. So you have these little bubbles in solution, some on the side of the can. So when you open it up, their volume goes up, but unfortunately there's pop in the way, so you end up wearing it. That's not a good thing. So does anybody out there in audience land know what, what you do so it doesn't spew on you? Yes, Bob, come on up here. Bob, come on this side. You can be part of the picture here. Right. If somebody shakes up a can of pop, what do you do so it doesn't spew on you? Because you're going to be the one opening it up. Well, we'll try to tap it. Yeah, some people claim that if you tap the top, you dislodge the bubbles. There may be some truth in that. This is an experiment that you could probably work on in your classroom. In fact, NSF should probably support further research because some people claim really it's not the tapping but just the function that it takes some time and this allows the bubbles to come to the top that really lets you open the can of pop without it spewing. But we're not going to do that research today because that would take many cans of pop to try it over and over. So I'm going to shake it up and I claim that if you tap it, and you have to tap it smartly, Bob, and I can do that because my name's Lee. <laughs> Okay, now, I've tapped it, I've dislodged the bubbles, they go to the top, and I claim you can open it and it shouldn't spew on you. All right. Do you believe? You want me to face uh, the can towards you? I think, I think that's not a good idea. Stand by the sink just in case. And Bob, those are good glasses. They're Flynn's mm -hmm. premier safety glasses, but I've got another pair for you. Oh. If you could take those off and put these on. That's a good look. Face the camera there. Let me turn these on. Just uh, the wipers are not working too well today. Yeah, I feel like Ronnie Racer. Well, there you go. Well, they're not going to work, but that's good. You okay with that? Yes. So you want to tap it the way you're comfortable with tapping it. That's good. And then, yeah, I'd, I'd hold it straight up. <laughs> that way it gets on you and not me. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it is amazing. Better. Yeah. Theory guides, experiment decides. Now, what do you think if we could, instead of shaking it up just like I did, if we could shake this up, say, 40,000 times per second, and then you would open it up right away. You think that would be interesting? I yeah, sure would. Yeah, so we're going to do that outside because this will spew up about 30 feet in the air. So we're going to be taking this outside. We're going to be using this ultrasonic generator over here, but that's for later on. All right, we're outside here with the... Uh, Boyle's Law Apparatus, and we were shaking up a can of Coke, and we opened it up, and we saw that as the pressure goes down, the volume goes up. We also talked a little bit about Henry's Law, how the pressure is directly proportional to the uh, 
The concentration is directly proportional to the pressure over a fluid. Here we have an ultrasonic vibrator or generator. This is going to produce about, this is going to oscillate the water that's in this trough about 40,000 times per second. When I put these Coke bottles in there with a small opening, it'll cause the same vibrations to occur inside the Coke. This will cause many nucleation sites to form, which means little bubble packets will form. The carbon dioxide will gl glom onto there, forming small bubbles, which will grow rather rapidly in a very fast sequence of events, building up a high pressure. And something interesting will happen, as you will see. So I'm going to remove these two tops. There we go. You can, if you're up close, you can hear that. Take the, put my pop in. When I did this originally, I had to send a kid outside to find out what size, and I believe it was 1564, <laughs> believe it or not. I sent a kid outside to try this over and over and over again until we got the maximum height. Theory guides, experiment decides. Okay, so we've got both bottles of cola in there. I like to use the diet cola. I use the diet cola because there's less cleanup, less stickiness, the ants like it less. Oh, look, I'm excited. So I'm going to turn the switch, and I'm going to leave the scene as fast as possible. Okay, this precedes or predates the Mentos thing by many, many years. We did this about maybe 20 years ago. The Mentos thing which is a similar process, it was actually, as far as I know, at UIC, somebody showed me how to do Mentos and Coke in 1999, but they simply dropped the Mentos, or it could be Lifesavers, directly into a bottle of Coke, and it spewed up, and I said, well, that's nice, but it only went up without the cap on about a foot. That was impressive, but I said, you know, because I had worked with some of this before, that if you put a hole in there and you drop it in right, you can get it to go up much, much higher. So eventually we optimized that so we could get it to go up much higher. We did it in the Letterman show, and then it ended up being all over the web, and about two or three years later, it caught on like crazy, and people were doing it all over the country. So if we can get me another bottle of pop, I'll show you that real quick. And again, that has to do, for the most part, with nucleation sites. Some people will say, well, there's a material in there, there's some gum arabic or something, and that causes the pop to go up when you mix it in that's in the Mentos, and that's probably hogwash for the most part. It's really not that. It's really the rough surface on the Mentos, because you can also use Lifesavers. If you put in the... Uh, um, gum arabic in there without the mento without the rough surface, not much happens. So I really think it's more of a physical phenomenon than much of a chemical. So here we have some mentos along with some lifesavers. Doesn't matter which one you use. Through the hole in the cap, there's some tape holding it on. And we found out we wanted a nut on there. The nut's on there so it'll just bring it down. There's all kinds of things you can buy from all kinds of bogus people out there that are actually useless. This is cheap. It's free. You can make it at you know, take candy away from the kids and you've got a free setup. So, I'm going to take the cap off. Now, the, the cool one, we're done by some guys from Maine, some lawyers, I believe, they took 100 bottles of Coke and they dropped the Mentos in in a whole series of very, very interesting events. It was kind of cool. You could probably still see that online. So here it is, I'm going to screw this on, remove the tape, and we can see if we get the same type of an effect. So Boyle's Law, a little bit of nucleation sites, pressure, and volume are inversely proportional.